Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, the there's two classes of angels. This is going to be angels, their purpose, part three. But there's two groups, different groups of angels. There are the group of angels that were faithful to the Lord, and then there were the angels that were not faithful to the Lord. Satan's one-third that his tail drew, as recorded in the book of Revelation, and we're going to cover that later. But the Bible's not a book about angels. I mean, they're mentioned, you know, but... Uh, they're not the subject of the book. The subject of the book is actually Adam and his children, and specifically Christ, who redeems them. The Bible's the book to, for, and about Christ and Adam, his special creation. So, with that in mind... Now, there's a lot of people that will tell you that Adam and Eve were the only two people in the Garden of Eden. And if you've never read Genesis 3 and Genesis 4 and Genesis 5 and Genesis 6, um, I mean, let's face it, the book of Genesis is the foundation. And... When you're building a house, you need a solid foundation. I mean, if you're going to put walls up built out of stones, you don't want to build it on a sand because the heavy stones are going to, you know, when the sand shifts, uh, the walls collapse and then the roof falls in on you. That's why Jesus compared our, you know, building our faith on the rock. Well, let's read that. You know what? I was just going to read a portion, but, you know, sometimes when I read, start reading, it's it's hard to know where to start. I mean, I have an idea, generally, how I want to conduct a Bible study, but uh, there's so many different doctrines woven into the Bible, and unless the Holy Spirit gives you eyes to see you know you just don't see the connections that's why the bible says that the uh the wise would understand but the wicked wouldn't i think i'm paraphrasing there but you know the uh, the evil ones can read the bible and they'll get nothing from it that's why the lord spoke in parables he said because the uh he hid it from those that didn't have ears to hear and eyes to see. But those that wanted the Lord, he op he would open their eyes. It's uh, spiritually discerned. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, we read, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. All right, let's go to Matthew 7. I guess we're going to read the whole chapter. Judge not that ye be not judged. Now, there's another verse in the Bible where Christ says to judge righteous judgment. You know, if you're smoking cigarettes and weed and you've got somebody you know that, you know, drinks alcohol and they're a drunk, I mean, yeah, are you're going to judge them for their drinking, but you're smoking weed and cigarettes? And trust me, I've done it all. I'm, you know, I'm not some lily white uh, hypocrite. I'll admit my shortcomings. I'm surprised I didn't get lung cancer back in the old days. So judge not that ye be not judged. 
For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite! First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then th uh, shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thine, thy brother's eye. Listen carefully. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Ooh, don't give that which is holy to the dogs? What, 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 what are dogs? Now, we all know four-legged animals with a tail at bark are dogs, but is that what they're talking about here? No, they're talking about two-legged dogs. The King James Bible interprets the King James Bible. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 17. This is called parallelism. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So you got a prostitute or a, a sodomite that's bringing money uh, to the priest because, you know, for a vow or for, for anything. You don't want these, you don't want their money. I mean, <laughs> even Judas Iscariot, when he betrayed Christ for the pieces of silver and he cast it into the temple, um, you know, here it is, they lied to put Christ to death and they were saying, well, you know, it's not lawful to put uh, the price of blood money into the temple, you know. Yeah, that's the kind of hypocrisy there was. So, believe it or not, sodomites are called dogs. Deuteronomy 23, 17, and verse 18. So, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Swine have got very sharp tusks. Anybody remember the movie Old Yeller, Disney, where they killed the dog? I never watched it, but I know about it. Verse 7. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom, if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in, they're at. Unless, of course, you listen to Billy Graham, Billy Goat Graham. Uh, then he says, well, you know, wide's the gate. God wants everybody coming to heaven to be with him. Well, that's not what Jesus is saying here. Because straight is the gate, narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few, few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Turn on TBN. Turn on the 700 Club. 
Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not good, uh, not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Huh. Just because we call him Lord, Lord, that don't mean nothing. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Maybe we need to find out what the will of God in heaven is and do it. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, that ye that work iniquity. Scariest words you could ever hear in your entire life. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, ah, here we go, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Remember when you build a house on a foundation? You want to build it on a rock, a big rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as one of the scribes. And that people, Genesis, is the foundation of the Bible. Are you going to build it upon the rock? And Paul says that rock was Christ. Are you going to build the house, your house upon the rock? Or are you going to build it upon sand, the doctrines of the demon nominational church? I have never seen a church that would touch Genesis, I'm sorry, the book of Ezekiel chapter 31. Not a demon nominational church. There's only a handful of churches that will touch this, but I'm going to. Ezekiel chapter 31, verse 1. All right, verse 1. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude. Whom art thou like in thy greatness? Now remember, in times past, Egypt was a great empire. And uh, let me prove something. Now, uh, let's see. In Genesis 6, after the flood, you had uh, Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was not kosher. He was the father of Canaan, the Canaanites. And um, just Egypt's not spoken of very nicely in Scripture. So let's take a look. The book of Psalms 105 and verse 23. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Now, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Jacob and Israel are synonymous. Uh, Psalms 105.27 They showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. Psalms 106.22 Wondrous works in the land of Ham and terrible things by the Red Sea. 
So Psalms 105:23 tells you, Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Egypt was the land of Ham. And no, that wasn't Smithfield. All right, let's go back to Ezekiel 31. I guess we'll do verse 2. Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude. Whom art thou like in thy greatness? Verse 3. Listen carefully. Behold, behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon, with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud, and of an high uh, stature, and his top was among the thick boughs. The waters made him great. You ever heard of the Nile River? Yeah. So, when you got water, you got crops. No water, you got the Sahara Desert or Death Valley. Um, verse 4, The waters made him great. The deep set him up on high with her rivers running around about his plants and sent out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field. Family trees, right? And his boughs were multiplied, and his branches because uh, became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. All the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations." Thus was he fair, thus was he fair in his greatness. Now, I don't think they were playing board games like Monopoly and, and he didn't cheat. Uh, I don't think that's what they're talking about when they said, it, you know, fair or, you know, playing a fair game of soccer or uh, baseball or football or whatever. No, I think they're talking about complexion, Snow White. Uh, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Snow White. Snow White. Fair. That's what fair means. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. What? The Assyrian was in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve? What? Nobody ever teaches that. Guess what, people? Remember when Cain, in verse, um, uh, verse I think it's verse chapter 4 in Genesis, that Cain rose up and killed Abel? And then he said, if anybody finds me, they'll kill me? Well, if it was just... Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, who was going to kill him? These people. I remember Cain went east to the land of Nod and found himself a wife. Where'd that wife come from? And then he built a city. You don't build a city for a husband and a wife and maybe a kid or two. You don't build a city. Guess what? There were other family trees in the garden. I mean, that's what Ezekiel 31 is all about. And if you look it up, Adam is a racial description. And one of the meanings in the Hebrew on Adam is fair. Another is ruddy. And there's only basically one race of people that are ruddy and fair in their complexion. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Verse 10. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast lifted up thyself in height, and hast shot uh, up his top among the thick boughs, and his heart is lifted up in his height, I have therefore delivered him into the hand of the mighty one of the heathen. He shall surely deal with him. I have driven him out for his wickedness. 
and strangers, the terrible of the nations, have cut him off and have left him upon the mountains and in all the valleys. His branches are fallen and his boughs are broken by all the rivers of the land and all the people of the earth are gone down from his shadow and have left him. Um, upon his ruin shall all the fowls of the heaven remain and all the beasts of the field shall be upon his branches to the end that none of all the trees by the waters exalt themselves for their height. Neither shoot up their top among the thick boughs, neither their trees stand up in their height. All that drink water, for they are all delivered unto death to the nether parts of the earth, in the midst of the children of men, with them that go down to the pit. The nether parts of the earth, people. Thus saith the Lord God, In the day that he went down to the grave, I caused a mourning. I covered the deep for him, and I restrain the floods thereof and the great waters were stayed and i caused lebanon to mourn for him and all the trees of the field fainted for him now when do trees faint you know family trees people i made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall when i cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit and all the trees of eden all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. They also went down into hell with him, unto them that be slain with the sword, and they that were his arm, that dwell under his shadow in the midst of the heathen. To whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shalt thou be brought down to the, with the trees of Eden, Unto the nether parts of the earth thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that be slain with the sword. You ever seen any uns, uh, uncircumcised trees? No. This is Pharaoh. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. Did you learn something? I hope so. We're talking about family trees here, people. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 24. We're going to read about Abraham and, and Isaac. Um, in James 2 and verse 23, we read, And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. How would you like to be called the friend of God? All right, so let's read Genesis 24, verse 1. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Well, you would hope, um, when you're a friend of God, you would hope God would bless you in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, he said, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. Um, I don't, I'm not familiar with this custom, but, you know, when you put your hand under somebody's thigh and made them swear, uh, I guess it was some kind of a binding oath. Verse 3, And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. He was making him swear before God, don't you dare take a Canaanite for a wife for my son Isaac. Don't you dare. The Canaanites were from Ham. Okay. And God cursed Canaan. And if you don't know what happened in Genesis 6, I have a playlist on it. The sons of God, when you read Job 38, it's pretty plain and clear that they were the fallen angels. I know the churches like to hide this truth. Well, I use that term, churches, loosely. Your demon nominational churches will tell you that uh, they were just godly men that got married to ungodly women 
And then they had Giants for children. I guess they all play for the NBA, huh? Yeah. No. The Canaanites were satanic hybrids, fallen angels mixing with humans to destroy the bloodline, to destroy the line so Christ could not redeem them. That was, that was the purpose of the virgin birth, people. You know, and I have people tell me all the time, oh, well, you know, Alma just means a young woman. It doesn't really always mean virgin. No, Christ was the only one that had a virgin birth. And he had the same mother and father that Adam did. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. So, don't get a Canaanite wife for my son, Isaac, the chosen sea line. Verse 4. But thou go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son, Isaac. Kindred. Kind. K-I-N-D. Kindred. Go to my family. My unpolluted family bloodline and take a wife unto my son Isaac and the servant said unto him peradventure the woman will not be willing to go uh, be willing to follow me unto this land must I need needs bring my son again unto the land from whence thou camest and Abraham said unto him beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again in other words no don't take him back to the old country you know bring Bring the woman here. The Lord of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, which spake unto me and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee. This is angels, part three, right? He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. And if the willing, if the woman... And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath. Only bring not my son thither again. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and swear to him concerning that matter. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hand and he rose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor now if I remember correctly Nahor was a family member of Abraham I think he was a father or a brother or I don't I don't remember I, I go look it up but it's just remember he was kindred to Abraham 11. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. And it came to pass... Before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother. Ah, okay. Nahor was Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. And there's people tell you, oh, just fair just means beautiful. It doesn't mean like light complexion. Uh, 
Well, go into Abraham, uh, Webster's 1828 dictionary. You know, the, the people that wrote the Bible, um, like the King James people, they knew what fair meant. All right. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Snow White. Snow White. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. Now, camels are something. Now, I'm not talking about cigarettes. Um, camels will just drink and drink and drink. Uh, camels can go a long, many days without drinking water. But then when they finally do drink, um, there's been reports of camels drinking just like gallons of water, like seven or eight gallons of water at a time. You get a thirsty camel, boy, they will just suck the water down. And, you know, So how many times would she have to do that with a pitcher? Not for one camel. Remember, he has 10 of them. She's probably looking at all these camels going, well, I better get started. I'm going to be here for a little while. You know, <laughs> camels will just, I've heard, seriously, I've heard camels drinking seven, eight gallons of water at a time. Um, all right. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again unto the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the men wondering at her held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold, and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. She said moreover unto him, we have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. Uh, provender is food for the camels. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. And the damsel ran and told them, of her mother's house these things. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. Now Laban will be the one who gave one of his daughters to Isaac's son, Jacob, whose name becomes Israel. And remember, uh, Isaac's brother, I mean son, is Esau, who was Jacob's brother. From what I understand, the word Laban means white. Yeah. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man into the, unto the well. And it came to pass, when he saw the earring and bracelets upon his sister's hands, and when he heard the words of Rebekah, his sister sang, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well. And he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord. Wherefore standest thou without? For I have pre prepared the house and room for the camels. And the man came into the house, and he ungirded his camels, and gave straw and provender for the camels, and water to wash his feet, and the men's feet that were with him. And there was set meat before him to eat, and he said, I will not eat until I have told mine Aaron. And he said, Speak on. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. And the Lord hath blessed my master greatly, and he has become great, and he hath given him flocks and herds and silver and gold, and men servants and maid servants, and camels and asses. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old, and unto him hath he given all that he hath. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to thy son, to my son, of the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I dwell. 
But thou shalt go unto my father's house, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son. And I said unto my master, Peradventure, the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, The Lord whom a uh, Lord before whom I walk will send his angel will send his angel with thee, and prosper thy way, and thou shalt take a wife for my son of my kindred and of my father's house. Then shalt thou be clear from this my oath, when thou comest to my kindred, and if they will not give thee one, thou shalt be clear from my oath. And it came this day unto the well, and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper my way which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water, and I say unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water for my pitcher to drink, oh, of thy pitcher to drink. And she say unto me, Both drink thou, and I will also draw for thy camels. Let the same be the woman whom the Lord hath appointed out for my master's son. And before I had done speaking in my heart, behold, Rebecca came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down unto the well and drew water. And I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink, I will give thy camels drink also. So I drank, and she made the camels drink also. And I asked her and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bare unto him. And I put the earring upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And now, if he will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also uh, to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they did eat and drink, he and the men that were with him, and tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning, and he said, Send me away unto my master. And her brother and her mother said, Let the damsel abide with us a few days, at the least ten. After that she shall go. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way. Send me away, that I may go to my master. And they said, We will call the damsel damsel, and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. Now, people that complain about arranged marriages or marriages planned, uh, for example, this was planned to the Lord, they asked her. They didn't force her to go. They asked her, Will you go? And she said, I will go. See, she agreed. And they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions. And let thy seed possess the gates of those which hate thee. Now is 15 million or so you-know-whos in the Middle East in a little state called is ray l does that fulfill this promise thousands of millions i don't think so and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them but we were told that god loves everybody no there are people that hate god's chosen people and Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man. And the servant told Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well, La Herol, 
for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel, for she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. You know what, people? Let me tell you something. Back in the 50s, uh, when you look at newsreels from the 40s and the 50s, women used to wear, uh, not veils over their face, but they'd, they'd wear like a, uh, a covering over their hair, like a veil. I mean, she was probably covering her face, but... Uh, People wore, uh, the women wore that stuff all the time in the 50s. I was watching a, uh, a video of a, uh, a news thing back in, from the 50s, some broadcast or a, mo a movie clip or something. And uh, I was watching all the women with uh, head coverings getting on a bus or something in a city. I mean, it was common back then. Boy, has the United States changed. Now they wear thongs at the beach, right? Therefore she took a veil and covered herself, and the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Now I have a playlist on the... Uh, promises uh, God made to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob Israel and I've got a video on uh, why God hated Esau so if you're interested uh, Isaac and Rebecca had um, Jacob and Esau and if you're interested in learning more about that and like I say Genesis is the foundation of of the um, the Bible, the house, the house that God built. I mean, you know, if your walls are built on sand and that sand shifts, the whole thing caves in on you. The roof falls on your skull. But if you're built on a rock, you know, the winds come and the house doesn't fall on you. All right, everybody, uh, this is probably going to be the end of part three. Uh, we're going to take next, probably the next part four we'll do is going to cover uh, Jacob's ladder. I'm going to kind of skip around. I'm not going to make this a huge study on Jacob, Israel, and Esau. I mean, it's very important that you know this stuff. It really is. I mean, but... Um, I've already covered the material and other things, and if you're interested, send me a message, and um, I'll show you the playlist, and you can read along. I mean, you know, I, I try not to put my own personal bias into this stuff. I try to just make it mostly scripture, but, um, you know, if you got a solid foundation, uh, it won't be easily shaken with the things that are getting ready to come to pass. And boy, I'll tell you, people, it's it's getting real. All right, so this is um, May 2nd and um, 2020. There's a lot of stuff coming down, people. Things are getting real. I mean, you know, this uh, corona thing is really going to change everything in America unbelievable so things are not going to go back to where they were ever again all right all blessings praise glory and honor to god the father and his only begotten son jesus who is the christ the lamb slain from the foundation of the world in jesus name amen